Dear Muslims, of the stories of the Quran is the story of the Prophet Ayyub. Allah says in the Quran, وَذْكُرْ عَبَدَنَا Ayyub." Remember our servant Ayyub. Allah praises Ayyub multiple times in the Quran. Allah says, Ni'ma al Abdu. What a great worshipper was Ayyub. Allah says, Innahu Awab. He would constantly turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After mentioning the story of Ayyub, Allah says that in this is dhikra li ulil albab. In the story of Ayyub are lessons, morals for the people of reflection and intelligence. Prophet Ayyub is of course one of the famous prophets of the children of Israel, Bani Israel. And the Prophet Ayyub was blessed not only with prophecy, but with wealth and health and family and every blessing of this world. Ayyub alayhi salam, Allah blessed him with a very large family and Allah blessed him with immense amount of wealth. And his wife was a righteous lady and she was of the descendants of the Prophet Yusuf. And the two of them worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah gave them deen and dunya. But Allah wanted to make Prophet Ayyub a role model for mankind. And for those who are chosen to be role models, they must undergo elements of suffering and pain. And Allah wanted to raise the maqam, the status of Prophet Ayyub. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ayyub with a series of tests. Not only did he lose all of his wealth, because of an accident, he lost all of his children in one night. The roof fell down and all of his children returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if that wasn't difficult enough, Allah then tested him with his health. Ayyub was a vibrant young man, handsome, but Allah tested him with something in his health. And slowly his outer appearance changed and his skin lost its luster until it seemed unseemly to look at. And then an odor began coming from his body. So the people asked him to leave the town. So he lived outside the city on a tent in a bank next to the river. And his loyal wife continued to take care of him. She would be a maidservant and get some money and buy food and continue to take care of Ayyub alayhi salam. Until one day she complained to Ayyub and she said, for how long are we going to live like this? We used to live with such poshness, with such grandeur. You're a prophet of Allah, do something. Ask Allah to change our situation. The prophet Ayyub asked his wife, Dear wife, how many years did we live in comfort? How many years did we have wealth and children? How many years were we in blessed times? She counted, she said, 60 years we were in good. So Ayyub said, for 60 years, you never complained that Allah was giving, giving, giving. If Allah has chosen for a few years to take away, why should we complain now? Allah is the best of planners and Allah has a better plan for us. And things became more dire for Ayyub alayhi salam. His wife was not able to earn income. And the Quran references that his wife perhaps tempted Ayyub to do something that was not accordance with Islam. Some say that Shaitan came to his wife and Shaitan said, if you do something to me, then I will give Ayyub back his life his wife then made this offer to Ayyub the shaitan came to me said if you do this and that you'll get your life your health your wealth back and Ayyub alayhi salam got so angry that he said if Allah ever gives me strength then I will have to discipline you 100 times I'm going to discipline you right now I'm too weak to do anything but because you dared bring up the name of shaitan I swear by Allah I will have to do this if I ever recover my life things became even more dire and Ayyub's wife had to sell her hair to get some money to feed and because of this she has come with no hair when Ayyub saw this his heart broke and so he raised his hands to Allah and he said Rabbi inni masani al-durru wa anta arhamur rahimin Ya Rabb calamities have afflicted me and you are the most merciful of all who show mercy and as soon as he uttered that dua the angel came to him and said dip into this pool touch your feet to this water this water shall cure you completely and he literally just dipped his foot in that river and he became completely fresh and anew as he was 20 years ago so much so when his wife came to give him food she found a young man she said oh servant of Allah do you know where Ayyub is I can't find him and he said I am Ayyub your husband and then she recognized it was Ayyub and how about the oath that he made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said take some twigs take some leaves that have 100 branches and just rub it and that will be your oath unto you because in the end of the day she was a pious and righteous lady but she slipped up once and so Ayyub alayhi salam Allah gave him a way out and Allah protected his wife as well from Ayyub's oath we need to understand that being tested and undergoing problems 
and having traumatic experiences in health, in wealth, in our lives, in our family relationships. This is not a sign that Allah is displeased with us. If anything, it is a sign that Allah Azza wa Jal wants to cleanse you of mistakes to raise your ranks higher. And Allah knows I'm not worthy of that status. So by this tragedy, by this calamity, by this anxiety, by this grief, some sins I might have committed that are impeding my journey to Allah. Some sins have been gotten rid of. And when those sins are gotten rid of, I now have the opportunity to rise higher than I was. Our Prophet wasallam said, when Allah loves someone, He tests him. And the more Allah loves that person, the more he shall be tested. Do not ever think, brothers and sisters, that a test that you're facing is an indication that Allah does not love you. Allah says in the Quran, Inna wajadnahu sabira. We found a you patient. Patience means you control your tongue and you only say what will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Patience means you control your limbs and you act in a manner that is befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never once did Ayyub alayhi salam complain to anybody except Allah directly. We complain to Allah, we don't complain about Allah. Astaghfirullah. Complaining to Allah is Iman. Ya Rabb, I am in pain. This is what Ayyub is saying. Ya Rabb, you see my situation. Ya Rabb, you are so merciful. Ya Rabb, it's difficult for me to bear this. This is complaining to Allah and this is what a mu'min does. Sabr is acquired through only one mechanism. Wasbir wa ma sabruka illa billah. Be patient and your sabr will come from Allah. And there's a beautiful hadith that is in Sahih Bukhari. I wish so many of us understood and memorized it. What did our Prophet say? Whoever desires to acquire patience shall be granted patience by Allah. You want to have sabr. You desire to have sabr. Allah will give you sabr. Just ask Allah, Oh Allah, give me sabr and you will get it. Increase your dua in order to battle the stress that you're facing. This world and this abode is not the abode of ultimate peace. It's not the abode of perpetual rizq and wealth and blessings. No, that is the next life ahead. This is not the abode of ultimate happiness. Find happiness in the next life and you will find it when you turn to Allah Azza wa Jal and overcome the problems of this world. This world is the abode of tests. The next world is the abode of perpetual bliss. We don't want tests. We don't want trials. We don't want to be tested like Ayyub alayhi salam. Ayyub did not want to be tested like this. But when Allah chooses you for a test, then realize that Allah has chosen you for a divine wisdom. So even though you don't want the test, when Allah has chosen you, you rise up and accept the challenge and you ask Allah that Allah Azza wa Jalla blesses you with the ability to pass that test. May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran and may he make us of those who his verses they understand and apply his halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness, you as well ask him for he is the Ghafoor and the Rahman.